So first of all, uh, thanks uh, Jose and all of the organizers for inviting us. It really means a lot to us. So Lean Agile London is uh, a legendary conference and every practitioner who once spoke on any conference, like true Agile conference, wants uh, to be on your stage and uh, I can say that we are honored. Unfortunately, due to the circumstances, we couldn't be there, but uh, we would like to share with you uh, examples from Ukraine how our culture has changed and how our, how our behaviors have changed as well. And also we would like to show you why, in our humble opinion, why did it change? Okay, yeah. so all of the examples that we're gonna share are actually happening. Uh, we're gonna try to do it in a fun way because we're from Ukraine and if you know somebody from U Ukraine we're pretty sarcastic and ironic, uh, despite the fact how, how hard things are. So let's just also try to have some fun over here. All right? Yeah. And of course, we want to be there with you. And because of war, we cannot. And when we start discussing this with Jose, thank you for inviting us. Uh, we were dreaming about the fast win and fast end of this war. And so I, I and Andre can travel, but unfortunately we cannot yet, but we will do it as soon as we can. And it's about culture and it's our humble overview, as Andre said, it's just some intermediate state right now of, of this change. But we hope that this change will stay for a while in this country and we will live in this new society after we will win in this war. So. Yeah, it's some nowadays observation of two Ukrainian agile people, so to say. And we hope that it will be not only uh, like helping you to raise awareness about what's going on here and about Ukrainians, but also it might be a bit valuable from some leadership organizational design perspectives and maybe even inspirational, I hope so. If no, then sorry, it was idea of Hossein and organizers to invite us. And uh, let's start this presentation. Slava Ukraini! Heroim Slava! Yeah. All right, so we have Artem today and Artem is a man uh, which is pretty hard to, to, to highlight, uh, highlight some stuff because he's done so much. So Artem has two of his own companies, a simple sense with which Artem helps, helps organizations to gain business agility. And he, he has another company, uh, Startup IT, where he helps people to get into the IT and they offer amazing courses, especially quality assurance courses over there. So Artem is also a certified less practitioner and also certified less coach. He's the only one in Eastern Europe. And also Artem and I, we uh, arranged, as Kosa mentioned, uh, Agile with Ukraine, uh, during which raise awareness in Agile community uh, in the world of what's actually going in Ukraine and that the war is not over. And we're trying to raise money to help Ukrainian army and Ukrainian people. And also Artem, as Hosa mentioned, uh, is the co-founder of UA Kids Today uh, with uh, his lovely wife. And Artem has two kids, the beautiful kids who are awesome. They're humorous, they're fun, uh, they're oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Artem also has a dog, yeah. yeah. And what we have in common with Andre, of course, Agile Scrum, Ukrainians, and dogs. Dogs. Yeah, like but, dogs? but in my case, it was a mutual decision with my girlfriend. So every man knows same what here. mutual decisions are about. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, the, the same here. Okay, so and a few words about my friend Andre. Uh, he's Ukrainian professional Scrum trainer at Scrum.org, just one of three, four people in the world who are Ukrainians and PST. And I believe that one of the youngest one, yeah, is it true? So yeah. he becomes a PST very early. He's quite wise man, despite his years. And he's also certified less practitioners, one of from our gang, so to say, uh, who have been infected by Craig Larman and Bas Vode, and also registered a Scrum at Scale practitioner and co-founder of Agile with Ukraine, Andrei, accurately says that we are trying to collect money for Ukrainian f foundations who are helping our Armenian people, but we are not only trying, we've collected about $65,000 in a two months with 
your support also i believe and we are planning to collect more because we still need to give this money to people for medical equipment for tactical equipment and so on and also he is living with his girlfriend and american staffordshire terrier so our dogs are quite uh, senior dogs so to say because i have a, a german boxer and it's more than enough about ourselves uh, let's talk about the topic and the reason uh, why we are not in london and how do we feel here in Ukraine? Because it's a most frequently asked question, like, oh, are you really in Ukraine? In, in which city? How are you there? I, I'm answering this question every day. And now I have some numbers, because we are agile people, lean agile people, do really like to analyze data and numbers. And official data was posted today that it is already day number 19. It's not hard to, to calculate. And also, Humans are very adaptive that they want to add from personally my experience being here for all these 90 days. So we have adapted to everything, including air alarms. We don't want to make this noise for you, but believe me, it's not the most pleasant sound you want to listen at night or at mornings when you woke up at 5 a.m. And during these days, only in Kyiv, there were 390 air alarms. Can you imagine? During 90 days, 390 air alarms. And total time of this sound in your ears was calculated as 17 full days from 90 people are listening to this. And it was only six days without attacks on Kyiv region and city and without alarms. Only six days. Today, for example, it was two already. Or yet, we don't know. So this is the reality. The war is not finished yet, but we are adaptive, as I said, and we are not sitting in shelters and crying and begging for, for, for survival. We are continuously doing whatever we can do, each of us. And this talk would be exactly about how the society have been changed recently and adapted to this new reality and which patterns you can observe and how it's related to culture, to beliefs, to mental models, and etc. etc. And we will talk about it during the next 40 minutes, I believe. And I hope that we will be in a good timing. And during preparation to this talk, we were asking, we were asking people to fulfill the Google form to say about, to give us some data so we can rely on about the level of trust here. Because we have some, you know, gut feeling. But at the same time, we want to make sure that it's not only our gut feeling of two of us. So we asked ask them two questions. One of them was, how much did you trust unknown Ukrainians before 24th of February from 0 to 10? And the second question was, how much did you trust unknown Ukrainians after February 24th? And you can see the change, yeah? Even w without debriefing, it's quite visually observed, but I, I did it for you. So before, ah, by the way, what means zero? Zero means everyone is lying. I cannot trust anyone around, yeah? Especially unknown Ukrainians. And 10 was, I will give the last dollar from Matras, you know, the last hide dollar in my house, I, I ready to give it. And as you can see, m not much people were ready to give the last dollar before war started, and quite a lot are ready to do it right now. An average score is growing from 4.82 to 6.18. And we can see the huge difference in the high, top high scores from 7 to 10. From 19 percent, about 50, 54 and 6 percent. Yeah? And this trust is a foundation for a big change in the behavioral models, in the patterns we can see around, and of course, as a consequence, in the outcome we can observe and get right now here in Ukraine, and in this war especially. Yeah? Our talk will be based on one of the models, on one of the tools from System Thinking. It's quite a popular one, it's called the Iceberg model. Who of you have been using this in your work? If no, it's also okay. I will share some very simple, brief example with you to, to get you know it a bit. 
and you can use it in your future, I don't know, agile adoptions, uh, change management with your companies, etc. Uh, it's very helpful sometimes. So let's take a very simple example from real product development team. Uh, it usually starts from the top, from what we can see. And let's imagine that event we can see, latest event, it's a missed and important deadline of release. So we need to release something in time. Yes, there was some commitment and we've missed the deadline. Have you ever seen such occasion? I believe that maybe some of you, at least once. Uh, if we will go deeper and we will ask the question, okay, what trends have there been over time? So maybe it's not for the first time. We can observe in this imaginary scenario that it's already like four out of six recent releases missed deadlines. Huh. So it's not the first one, and maybe we should stop reacting yeah, immediately. We should start analyzing deeper and go to some system thinking exercise. And we need to anticipate patterns and trends, and maybe to fix it, we need to redesign the structure which is underlying below. And if we will go to the structure in this imaginary case, uh, what we can see. For example, in this company, there were a lot of context switching. A lot of multitasking. So everything is urgent. And we do it at the same uh, at the same time in parallel, yeah? Because there are no clear priorities, several stakeholders demanding the urgent task for, which is the most priority for them exactly, yeah? And we have several backlogs, several project managers, product managers, product owners, VP of product, customer success director, and so on and so on. So this is the current structure. And if we will analyze this structure, we can understand that it leads us to these patterns. Yeah? But it's very hard to redesign structures if there are very strong underlying mental models below. And what model could be below this structure? For example, this one. We have a strong belief that this is the only way to work in this concrete company. Because I've been working here for the last 15 years. And believe me, it was always like that. When we were working as a 10 people, as 20, as 50 people, as 100, it always been like that. And moreover, it lead us from that time to nowadays success, because now we are a huge successful enterprise. So why we should change anything? Maybe it's the reason of our success. You see, the connection between mental models, structure, patterns what we can observe during the time, time frame and the event we are concretely trying to solve. Yeah? And we will be talking in this same uh, model, but starting from mental models. And I'll, now I will give the word to Andre, and he will explain you just a few popular mental models for Ukrainians before war started and what we are observing right now. So Andre, the microphone is yours. Yeah, no, thank you. So basically, as Artem said, mental models describe our beliefs, our values, our assumptions, our images we have in our heads when we think of uh, something. Basically, it's how we understand the system or the world works. And based on that understanding, we take our actions, right? So if we take a look at average Ukrainian, let, let's even go back into history. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, you know, Ukrainian history, but for 400 years we've been in any war possible in our region. We fought with every neighbor there was, we fought for independence, uh, after, so before the uh, First World War and Second World War started, we had a, uh, yeah. And we did it not because of our initiative, it's very <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah. We usually have been <laughs> under attacked, so it's very important yeah. note here. Yeah, yes, exactly. So we fought this entire time for our independence. And then in 1991, we have earned our independence. It's been more than 30 years since we've got our independence. But in those 30 years, we didn't really pay enough attention. We didn't invest as a country to nurture our culture. Uh, a lot of you might know that the vast majority of Ukrainians were bilingual. So we speak Ukrainian and Russian. 
and the majority of people didn't care in which language to speak. Them, I didn't even care in which language to speak. If someone spoke to me in Russian, I would answer in Russian. If someone would speak to me in Ukrainian, I would answer in uh, Ukrainian, but I would think in Ukrainian in my mind, right? And we didn't invest in our nation, national idea, right? So if you look, for example, at the US, we get the national idea, the American dream, all of the stuff. We didn't have this kind of thing in Ukraine. What did it really mean to be Ukrainian? We didn't pay any attention to that for those 30 years, which led us to focus on ourselves, not focus on the society and the community, we focus on ourselves. And the war has started eight years ago, 2014, when Russia invaded Donbass, annexed the Crimea. And of course, it was like a very, very big event, which pushed a lot of people to actually learn about Ukraine, learn our history. And then this long lasting war, it was localized in only one region of Ukraine, had made us also negligent, made us indifferent. They're shooting over there. I'm living, for example, in Kiev. It's 600 kilometers. So if they're firing over there, it doesn't directly impact me. And I'm too small to do anything. What if I stand up and do anything? If my neighbor doesn't do that, that won't change a damn thing. So if my neighbor doesn't do that, why should I do that? I'm going to focus on myself, right? And... Uh, so we should have made a disclaimer, we're going to use some Ukrainian political figures and try to explain them who they are. And we have one guy whose name is Viktor Medvedchuk. Uh, yeah, so he is one of the richest people in Ukraine, uh, one of the killers of Ukrainian culture and one of the people, the most trusted people of Putin, at least he was, uh, in regards of Ukraine. Uh, so he is a godfather to, Putin, to, to Putin's daughter. He is also the founder uh, of the political party, which is called the Opposition Platform. Uh, and this man received more than $5 billion to build the fifth column in Ukraine. And his task was to uh, recruit around 50,000 mercenaries in Ukraine who would have to make a coup in Ukraine. And imagine this, that we know that his approach as Ukrainians, we know that. And still 23% of Ukrainians by December 2021 still supported him. Yeah, but so by their votes on elections, so not just on votes, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 23% of Ukrainians supported him. Well, since the war started, that has changed and changed dramatically. And yeah, and yeah. Before it changed, I will show now how it changed. They were believers like uh, that current government want to continue this war, which was started eight years ago. And it, it caused by some nationalists and we are one nation with Russian people. So that was their level of beliefs yeah, on mm -hmm. the mental models state. And yeah. after war started, Andrei? Yeah, so, so uh, one more thing to add, even in our language, in common language, we used to say Eastern Ukraine and Western Ukraine, and Southern Ukraine and Northern Ukraine, as if they were really separate parts of Ukraine, even in our language, right? Which is not, not the true, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And as the war started, and people actually lived and slept in bomb shelters, in subways, a lot of stuff changed, right? And April 13 was one of the most awesome days uh, during this war because we finally got him arrested and he was captured while he was trying to leave Ukraine wearing Ukrainian military uniform. And we, we've spoken about the mental models that Ukraine had before the war started, before the 24th of February. How does it look now? We're just going to show the most recent picture from Ukraine and tell what is the mood and what is the thinking and the beliefs and the values of people over there. So, yeah, let's move on. But before uh, we will do it, we yeah. will show you the reaction of Ukrainian nation to <laughs> how he was captured. At the first evening, we've created more than 100 different memes. I will show you only two of them, quite normal ones, so to say polite one and international, but... 
Yeah, because we're going to show you only two because these are the two that we can actually show here. <laughs> yes. So this is one of the most popular, as you can see. And this is the second one. Uh, and even his past supporters who have been like voting for his party on election and for him personally on presidential elections were ready to support him. Now we're a big fan of this humor and so on. So they've, it looks like that they've changed their mind, at least for now. And I hope for the nearest future also, because it's quite yeah. important for our uh, independence. Yeah. And let's move forward to another mental model, Sandri. Yeah, so this is how Ukraine looks like right now. And we've discussed those previous mental models. So what has changed? What do we think now? What do we believe in now as on a macro level? So first of all, we stopped splitting up our country from the inside. There is no Eastern, Western, Northern, Southern, Central. No, there is one Ukraine with one people. So for example, this is the pictures from Kherson, which is currently under uh, under siege and, uh, and occupied by Russians. And those are the, and Kherson deemed to be one of the uh, regions where people supported Russia a lot. So you can see that uh, it's not true. It has changed. It has changed dramatically. And now we think we're one people, we're Ukrainians, and we're proud to, we're proud to be Ukrainians. Yeah, and they're even okay. ready to risk to yeah. go un under the rifles and show that they like, they, they care about it. Yeah. Because yeah. the second slide. Yeah. And right now, you cannot be indifferent, you cannot be negligent about the situation. So there is actually the, uh, here is the picture from uh, Chernihiv region, it's the northern part of Ukraine, yes, and here people were, who are unarmed, they just went out, you see somebody is even talking on the phone, they were totally unarmed and they went out to stop the tanks, unarmed, and they managed to do that. Yeah, it's just a regular civilians who go on the streets and say, like, go out from my city. I don't want to see you here. It's my city, mm -hmm. not yours. We don't need your help and support. Yeah. So earlier we've been, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't impact me directly. I won't do anything. Right now I cannot just sit and watch. Yeah. Right? What can I do? I am just a single person. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. do something. I will take my friends and we will go and speak with them and ask them to leave my ground. You yeah. Know? Exactly. This is a exactly. change. Exactly. Yeah. So even if the war is far away, I can do something to help my neighborhood, my community, even my neighbors. So uh, it's not a secret that not every Ukrainian is awesome and has a pure heart and soul. Some of them were trying to use the situation. And this is how we dealt with marauders in Ukraine, where just people were protecting the neighborhood. So why did they do that? Because the police is... Were, was also on the military task and they could not patrol the cities. So they did that, they stopped them until the police ha has arrived. And everybody's contribution is important. And right now we have this kind of mindset. We have this kind of mental model. And this is, this is the western part of Ukraine. It's Ternopil region, it's around 1,000 kilometers from, uh, uh, from Donbas region. But here it's the second day of the war. And Ternopil, Ternopil region didn't suffer as much as, for example, uh, Kharkiv or Sumer or Chernihiv. But on the second day of the war, you can see the cues to submit themselves to the territory defense of Ukraine. And right now we have more than 700,000 Ukrainians who are protecting our country from, from the intruders. So... Yeah, and maybe half of them are volunteers. Yeah, you know? yeah. So by the by the first week by the first week of the war, we had more than one hundred thousand people in reserves in reserves waiting to be called. There were even attempts to bribe someone to get on the military forces. So yeah. you see, it it was a very very drastic change in a short period of time. And this drastic change of mental models and the, the way we think about stuff those other changes. And Arthur will tell further. Yeah, and such a change in mindset doesn't come from now, nowhere, you know. And we love the f number five 
law of Craig Larman from Craig Larman's laws, culture follows structure. And let's talk about it for a while. What does it mean? Yeah, uh, such a dramatical change couldn't be uh, occasion of one event and next morning you woke up uh, thinking differently. Yeah, so maybe these eight years from the beginning of the war, from the war for Donetsk, for Lugansk, for Crimea, uh, have been like a first seeds in the, in the new culture, and now we can see the outcome because it was pushed more more powerful with more powerful event but anyway if we will go to this model by craig larman uh, we can see on this picture is a very simple example how we can interpret it for example we have some structure some square and there is culture existing inside this structure and then the new structure is introduced and it's a circle and the culture is still the same but afterwards, in new structure, you need to adapt somehow and to work in a different way. And new behaviors emerge. First, it's just behaviors. And we are not sure what we are talking about in this talk now. Is it just the behaviors or it's already habits? Some, for some people, it's already habits for eight years. For some people, it's just a new behavior. Yeah. Anyway, new habits stick if you are getting expected desired outcome and you fulfill your needs. Yeah. And in the end, new culture emerge inside the structure. So what we want to say is that we can observe not only these patterns of behavior, but we can also speak about some structural changes from the beginning of this year in this country. And one of them I want to start from is very important. And I believe it's very important in every change of big, of big system. It's one common goal. Yeah, one common goal for whole system. Instead of those several different goals for specific groups or specific regions united around, for example, oh, you know, we are all from Soviet people and one nation with them. I am more one nation with Soviet people than with, I don't know, people from some region. It one of the beliefs from the past, yeah? And people were united about such a silos. Or, oh, you know, we are all Russian speaking. All these people, doesn't matter about the country and nationalities, we are Russian-speaking people around the globe. It's one of the also beliefs. And it was a systematic to create one goal. I like, I, I want to live with them together. I want to collaborate with them together because of this parameter. Now we came to something like, we want to survive as a nation and as a country. And to make it happen, we need to send one government and their followers to same direction as a famous worship was sent. And yeah, we've started from worship already. It's done. And their leaders and ideology are coming soon, believe me. With your support, with uh, British people's support, with Polish people's support, with all Europe support. So we are, thank you so much. It's highly appreciated here. It's very important. But we will send them to that direction. And this support helps us shorten the time to market. Yeah, yeah. It, it is about uh, improving, enhancing the delivery. So, yeah, thank you for, for these efforts, everyone. Every effort is very important. So, one common goal is first one. Second one, it's about structure also. Yeah? It's one product owner. And, by the way, I want to remember, remind you about the slide with trust, level of trust. It's not only about trust to each other, it's also about trust to this guy. Because, yeah, on election it was 73%, but le last December it was 53% already level of support in Ukraine to, towards president. Now it's about 90 plus, and it's true. Yeah? So now it's really one product owner. And this product owner, thanks to some circumstances or his mindset, was wise enough to create a group of area product owners. I hope that you know these people already. Yeah, it's uh, people who are leading our army, our Ministry of International Affairs, and our representatives at uh, United Nations organization. Yeah, uh, and give them not only the title, but uh oh, am I freezing? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so give them not only the title, you know, but also gives them authority to make a decisions. So they are autonomous and authorized. And they are professionals. They have enough skills. And also with that support I've mentioned, they have resources to, to achieve goals. And we have clear 
one common goal as it was mentioned before. And also we have one team, finally united big team, 45 plus million people around the globe. And I want to believe Google, Google Images said that this is photo was taken on the streets of London. So this is Ukrainian support, uh, I don't know, on one of the streets of London. I hope so, that it's true. Um, what else? What else do we have? We go to we over me, finally. We finally moved from silos, these comfortable bubbles we were sitting in before, towards teams united around some goal, the big goal and some group goals. For example, we are not anymore like, I am an IT guy, I have a stable income and I am from Kyiv, I am not interested in this, how the people live in village somewhere far from me, or I am a designer, or I am, I am from art, uh, so I don't want to do something physically. No, everyone is helping where they can and how they can to help. And on this picture you can see the Ukrainian people cleaning up Irpin and uh, Bucha city after what was happened there. Yeah by them own, not waiting for someone who will do it for them, government or some third party, no. And they are just united and they are one team finally united with the same goal. And we can talk about the volunteers, some of them, like we with Andre, for example, organizing events to collect donations, collect money and then give them to others who are spending all, all the time after the work time and all weekends to find some helmets, Kevlar's and so on, buy it and send to Ukraine. Someone is way, like investing a lot of time to prepare food to territorial defense, to military people. All the restaurants is open and give this food for free to people who are protecting us. So we have not like my personal silos, which I'm comfortable to be in. We have uh, real teams and we over me. So one common goal, product owner, area product owners, one united team, we over me. This is a change in the structure already, yeah? You can see it's not, not such a hierarchical and independent. And we have multi-learning as a new feature. So people are creating these masking nets, for example. Maybe yesterday she was, a, I don't know, senior QA automation girl from Cyclum, which is maybe the true. Or people are spending half of the day preparing Bandera smoothie which in the past on Soviet territory was called somehow cocktail Molotov. Yeah? Now we call it Bandera smoothie. Molotov cocktail, yeah. So many, many things changing. One of our friends or colleagues, uh, agile coach, Zhenia Labunsky from Ukraine, uh, now he's one of the best experts, I believe, in uh, ordering and buying medical supplements. Uh, he's doing a lot of tests of uh, new manufacturers and put it on the internet to prevent spending money on uh, not very not, not, not good quality products and so on. So you need yeah. to learn something new and you're ready to do it, yeah, Andrew? A, a lot of people now actually do know a bunch of stuff about tactical equipment, what kind of prop uh, protection uh, Kevlar's have. Is it is it fourth, fifth, or sixth level of protection? What kind of helmets do we have to have? What kinds of glasses? Uh, what kind of medical kits? And three months ago, they had no idea about that. Yeah. And of course, you know, all these patterns, maybe for some of you are quite strange that we're talking about this like something unique or new, yeah? But many leaders tried, or at least they said that they tried to implement you know, implement culture like this before. So this guy who was the first president already, rest in peace, this guy, this guy, and this guy. But it wasn't a reality before and yet. And we hope that it will stay with us for years, these patterns, this new structure, which will lead us to new mental models uh, for, for, for next generations, you know. And what, what, what was needed to make it happen? What do you think? What, what was the real key ingredient yeah, to make this transformation? This was sense of urgency. Yes. So, some of you might think, uh, why didn't you have this kind of sense of urgency eight years ago when the war had started, right? Because of the previous mental models and the previous structures we were in. On some people, it had an enormous effect. But as soon as the scale uh, 
has gone bigger, it had even more effect on that. And just think about one thing. So you are people who are w w working in Agile, so I believe you've heard at least once, Agile transformation, right? <laughs> so it's, it's pretty hard to compare what is going on in Ukraine because we have war over there, we have battlefield over there. But the process of change is pretty similar over there, right? For the different way to uh, for a company to operate, for a company to work, you have to also change the mental models and the structure you're working in over there. But typically, with what do, with what do we start changing, uh, uh, bringing in change into organizations? Unfortunately, not with that one. It's very uncommon that we actually create new structure where we enabled to think differently, which enables us to operate differently. Right. So, in what happened in Ukraine, what it's a catastrophe, right? But it also showed us that we, as a country, can operate differently. Not only on the uh, level of people who tend, to, who thought earlier that they cannot decide anymore. The, the way how we collaborate with our government as well, and the way how our gov government reacts to the needs that we're going to show some example later, examples later on, it wouldn't have, have happened if average Ukrainian wouldn't think differently, if average Ukrainian wouldn't have changed the mental model. And yeah. it enabled the change of the structure and the way how we operate. So yes. yeah, two main ingredients, the sense of urgency and second one, what we've said before, it's a trust, it's a level of trust. Because if you're not exactly. trusting people, you cannot behave like that. And let's go to some patterns visualized through events. Yeah, so these two top levels of iceberg. Do you still remember iceberg at the beginning? Because we are still talking about it. Awesome, thank you. So the visualization is like this. Probably you've seen these nice stickers printed by Hase and team of organizers. Thank you so much. So pull, not push. And it's one of the examples, by the way. Our farmers, can you imagine just a regular farmer with tractor goes at the night and stole a tank from Russian military soldiers. It's unbelievable. I, I'm not such a brave. I will be hiding, but they did it. And not once, several times. We, we have a lot of proofs of it, you know. So we, we, we have a joke here that they are scared of our farmers more than our soldiers <laughs> because they are hiding from our soldiers and not every their soldiers have seen our soldiers. They are mostly fighting with civilians. But, yeah, uh, this left picture is probably Photoshop, but still, it shows you the courage of Ukrainian nation right now and what we are going through. Yeah, we have examples when gypsies also stealing tanks from fighters of military troops from Russia. Yeah, we have yeah. a story when old men, old men in the village, uh, they were invaders, they were looking for vodka and for other relaxing stuff, and he proposed them joints with marijuana, and what he did, he said this to news reporters, he was adding mercury from thermometers to each such a joint to poison them. Can you imagine the courage yeah, of such a people? They're crazy ones. Yet civilians who made these demonstrations for a few weeks every day in occupied Kherson and Melitopol, what you've seen on previous slides, isn't it a good example of new values with, with a, as a pattern already? as a pattern of courage. Of course, we are two scrum trainers, so we're a bit like <laughs> biased and maybe we are looking for scrum values, but Andre will tell you a bit about focus. Yeah, exactly. So as for focus, right now, the focus of Ukrainian, Ukrainian people is to help our army. So uh, we even have a joke in Ukraine that, do you believe in a God? Yeah, I do, but I believe more in the armed forces of Ukraine. And this is our current focus. We do help our, uh, our men and women who are bravely defending our country and people from all, all over the world. So, for example, this picture was taken in Warsaw and on the left in this uh, orange hood, you can see a friend of ours who is uh, Yaroslav, who is also a scrum master, 
who could visit him over there uh, over there in London uh, with you actually guys because he managed uh, to uh, to leave Ukraine on the first day before the border was closed. But right now Yaroslav is in Warsaw, and the first thing that he contacted me because I live in Warsaw for, for almost eleven years. How how can I help? And I still receive these numerous calls every 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 day from people who left the country. It's super un uncomfortable for them to. Uh, to be in another country because they left their home. They left a lot of stuff that they worked their entire life over there. And in very different country, they're trying to help. And the focus of Ukrainians is to help, 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 help. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's a what? very strong commitment. Oh, you want to... No, 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 no. I wanted to pass and it to you, but you managed to do it thank yourself. You. <laughs> I, feel, I feel it, my friend. So, yeah. and it's a very strong commitment because we have another great example. Maybe, maybe some of you heard about such a platform as OnlyFans. We will not ask you to raise a hand who are users of this platform for some reasons, but we have a beautiful example where at the end of April, so it's not at the beginning where people have some fundings and they easily donate, yeah? At the end of April, our platform Doe, which means Developers Org UA, it's the biggest platform and forum for software people in Ukraine, they've uh, started to collect money and in parallel another initiative called TRO OnlyFans, which means Territory, Territorial Defense Volunteers from OnlyFans. It, literally, girls who were working on this platform before, Ukrainians, said that they all collected money through this job will be sent to Ukrainian to support Ukrainian army. So they were wanted to collect uh, 30 million grivnas, which is almost one million dollars, US dollars, to buy uh, this kind of, uh, how to say, help me. It's, it's a big drone on which you can plant yeah bombs and yeah. drop bombs so it's like a long distance flying drone so it, it can fly 40 to 60 kilometers because usually yeah. drones are flying to uh, three five kilometer stops and it helps a lot to uh, to show the uh, 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 to show the artillery where the enemy is y yeah. you see the stuff I know about multi-learning right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's more experienced in drones than me. So, and you, as you can see, they've collected this amount of money at the 24th, maybe 25th of April in less than 24 hours. So they've started at one morning and before 5 a.m. next day, the money was collected already. And they said that next time we will be collecting 100 million grivnas to buy something more important. We've even heard about some people who are trying to buy F-16 warplane. <laughs> so they're trying to collect money. I'm unsure that it's impossible for Ukrainians because the level of commitment and craziness in, in this area is quite high, you know? And yeah, there was there was even actually one story from one of the biggest volunteers from Ukraine is that uh, some, some kind of a very rich person came to him and said, okay, what do you need? said, well, we need two drones, kind of this. And the investor said, why do we need to buy drones if we can find, if we can buy out the factory who makes them? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah the level of commitment is enormous right now. Exactly. Yeah, and you, are not, you are not asking people yeah. like, why do you want it or why do you need it? You are just do it. And Andre have also example with machine at the night, yeah? <laughs> with your birthday. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I had my birthday, and there was a car that we could that we could buy. And actually, Yaroslav, who whom we shot earlier, asked whether I know somebody who can uh, who can lend like uh, five thousand euros. I said, okay, come to my come to my birthday party, and yeah, Yaroslav received. <laughs> so just at yeah. the night, the person who he's seen once in his life, you know, and it's easy, busy stuff for Ukrainians nowadays. Moving on, another strong value that we'd like to demonstrate is actually respect. And, uh, this is how we pay respect for uh, our brave warriors who fought and uh, couldn't survive in this war. And it happens in every city that we have a funeral over there. So every person who actually sees, uh, sees the uh, grave 
uh, of Poland Ukrainian hero as actually kneels to, to pay his or her respect. Yeah. And they were not asked to do that. It's what just pe how just people self organized to do it. Yeah, it, it wasn't organized by anyone. Yes. So people just know about it and then this Sarafan radio, you know. And everyone mm -hmm. is on the streets. And maybe another small example of respect is like uh, respect to yesterday's political opponents. So there were a lot of holy wars in social media, uh, in, in even company of friends. Now there are much more respect to each other because we are all united. And it's caused by structure, as we said before, and of start changes, starting changing uh, mental models. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last but not least yeah value of scrum and we want to talk about it just a bit it's openness so we are very open people now we are, you can give the last dollar from your, from your matras to un unknown people and we have a joke i've posted it recently in my facebook and it was reposted several times like in my plans for 2022 i wanted to buy a car and i just did it but there is a small nuance <laughs> I bought it not for myself, but for Ukrainian military forces, and it's so so much true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but about the openness, it's actually not only how people are open, but yeah. how the government is open to collaborate with uh, with Ukraine. So, for example, if we want to buy a car from the European Union or, for example, from UK, and we want to bring back to Ukraine, we have to pay a tax. For that and that tax is pretty big one and there were a lot of volunteers who could offer card for our for our soldiers because they need cars uh, over there they need a lot of cars and there were requests for a change uh, of the, the law. Uh, yeah. of the law about importing the cars uh, from the european union for ukrainian people and it was changed i believe in a week yeah, you can some, imagine something, a country something about change, it. Yeah, changing a law which which is enormous to okay, you can bring bring in the car for free if you have just a letter from the commanding officer uh, of, of our troops. And this is yeah. also the openness of our country right now. Yeah, and another example we have a DIA mobile app in which the people who was pushed to leave their homes, so internal refugees or external refugees can just upload their passport, I mean ID, yeah, and it's already in the app, and in one click receive uh, funds, like 6.5 thousand grivnas for those who are, cannot work because of war in their region, and it will be like on your bank account, on, on your bank card, to, to be honest, in the next two weeks, so one or two weeks. And you do not need to go to any institutions to bring, you know, a, a lot of a folder of documents, of approvals, blah, blah, blah. No, because we now should be open to change and to remove some boundaries and to be open to like new ideas and uh, absolutely revolutionary things. The same like uh, telemarathon. All the news channels now working as one channel, so they are not competing anymore. Wh whose news are better? Whose uh, t t TV showrunners are better? They're sitting in one studio, providing the one channel of truth to Ukrainian. And it's also an example of openness to collaborate, yeah, openness to listen to each other and 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 trust to each other. Okay, I believe that this was more than enough that you want to know about Ukraine. <laughs> so let's go to conclusions. Let's go to conclusions, please. Yeah. And what we want to say here, if you need to make some changes. So first, start from systematic overview. Don't just rely on events which you are observing around. Yeah. Uh, don't try to receive uh, outstanding outcome without changing structure and without analyzing mental models, maybe even don't start changing structure without analyzing mental models. And, Andrei? Yes, so in, in our topic we said why culture matters. We all understand why culture matters. But having those, uh, having those fancy presentations of big four consultants, let's say, who come to your organization and say, yeah, we need to change the culture, we need to change the values. So we have bad news. 
those won't change until you actually change the structure and give the people the opportunity to work in different uh, structures. So our recommendation is to start with that. And right now, uh, we are observing what is going on in Ukraine. Uh, one of the most things that we are afraid of is whether the change would be sustainable. But in order for the change to be sustainable, the mental models and structure have to change the first. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much for your attention, listening to us this day. Uh, we wish you an awesome finish of the conference. And please stand with Ukraine just for a while bit. And we will thank you in advance after. We will invite you to all our conferences, houses, restaurants, uh, sightseeing, whatever do you prefer. Just say it to us because we are very open, committed, courage people with whole respect to all friendly, ap approached nations towards our nation. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.